In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between systematic risk and unsystematic risk. So when we think of risk in general, it's basically the chance that a firm's stock return is going to deviate and be different from what it is that you were expecting. So let's say that you buy stock in Amazon.com and you have a certain expectation. You think, okay, I'm going to get a 10% return on my investment in Amazon. But that return, it could be that you have a 40% return. It could be that you have a negative 40% return. It could be a return of 80%. There's a wide range of distributions, right? And Amazon stock price is going to fluctuate up and down on a daily basis, right? Now, some prices will fluctuate more than others, and so that will be captured by the stock's volatility, right? Which is the standard deviation of the stock's returns, right? So volatility is a measure of total risk. If we're just thinking about a single stock, it's a measure of total risk. But this total risk can itself be decomposed into two parts. And so there's a part that has to do specifically with Amazon. Okay, let's say, for example, that the CEO was going to retire. Okay, so if the CEO of Amazon is going to retire, that's seen as firm specific, right? That doesn't affect uh, Kroger Grocery Store or Microsoft or something. If the CEO of Amazon retires, that largely just affects Amazon, right? So if it's firm specific, another way of, of calling that is unsystematic risk, right? Firm specific. Now, in addition to that, this the second type of risk, systematic risk, is risk that has to do with the overall economy, right? So as far as with firm specific, it was something like the Amazon CEO retires. With systematic risk, you might have some kind of event, like for example, there's a, a global economic slowdown, right? So the global economy slows down, and let's say there's a reduction in consumer demand and demand for things that Amazon sells like Kindle devices and so forth, right? So now because it's a global economic slowdown, that's going to affect Amazon, but it's not specific to Amazon, right? It's not firm specific. We'd say it's, it's market wide, or we'll call it market risk, right? This is just risk to the overall market, right? It doesn't have anything to do just Amazon, right? Amazon will be affected, no doubt, right? So the Amazon's risk, when we think about the chance that the whether we're going to get this 10% return or not from Amazon and why it might deviate, we can say, okay, well, there's some market-wide conditions. For example, if the U.S. Fed decides to cut interest rates, maybe that affects the entire economy and Amazon, right? Uh, or we could have things specific to Amazon, right? Maybe Amazon CEO is involved in a scandal, right? And that, that causes some problems to the stock price. So there's really these, these two types, the two types of risk. And now you might be wondering, okay, well, why does this matter? Why, why do we even care about this? Well, the thing is that when we combine multiple stocks in a portfolio, right? So let's say we have a, a portfolio. Let's say you're an investor and here's your, your portfolio. You could buy Amazon, but you could also buy Microsoft. You could buy Netflix. You could buy a steel company. You could buy Alcoa. They make aluminum, right? Now, in this portfolio, the more stocks you add to this portfolio here, you buy a third firm, a fourth firm, a fifth firm, you add them to the portfolio, the idea being that each of these, even though Amazon will have things that happen specific to Amazon and Alcoa will have things that happen that are specific to Alcoa, that as this portfolio gets larger, those firm specific risks are going to average out, right? So these risks are going to average out. So although Amazon might have something really bad happen specific to Amazon one day, maybe Alcoa has something really good specific to Alcoa the next day, right? So the, the averaging out of these firm specific risks, we call that diversification. And so because, because of this diversification, because we can diversify away firm specific risks by holding a portfolio of firms instead of just one firm, we can also call unsystematic risk diversifiable risk.
right? So you might hear it called diversifiable risk, firm specific risk, unsystematic risk. They all refer to, to the same concept. So also it, as the risk, because volatility is the measure of total risk that we talk about, as you increase this portfolio of firms, you're actually, the portfolio, the volatility is gonna decrease as you add firms to the portfolio. And we'll, we'll talk more about that later, but um, now, since investors can basically diversify away this firm specific risk just by holding more firms in a portfolio, then there's not gonna be any risk premium for holding firm specific risk, right? So basically, and we're gonna get into this in future videos, but when we talk about measuring the cost of equity, the cost of equity for Amazon, right? So we can, we can estimate what is Amazon's cost of equity that isn't going to be a function of any firm specific risk with Amazon because we can get a free lunch, so to speak, by holding a portfolio of firms, one of which is Amazon, but then there's other firms too. Maybe we've got Walmart, we've got Kroger grocery store. So we've got a number of firms in our portfolio. So we ultimately can eliminate the firm specific risk because they average out due to diversification and therefore the cost of equity is actually going to be a function of the market risk, the systematic risk, right? Because we cannot diversify away the systematic risk, right? So this is not diversifiable. And that's because these a global economic slowdown hurts everybody, right? So because we, we can't diversify away these, these systematic risk, then we can think about the firm when we think about what is the cost of equity, what is the risk premium associated with a particular firm stock, what we really need to be thinking about is the level of market risk or systematic risk that's associated with Amazon or the firm in question because that's really what's going to drive, the systematic risk is what's going to drive the, the cost of equity for that firm. And we're gonna talk about how we would measure the amount of systematic risk with a firm like Amazon, and that's that's gonna be called beta, which you might have heard of, and we'll be talking about the beta and the capital asset pricing model for estimating cost of equity for a firm in the video.